follicular lymphoma is the most common type of slow-growing non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. We are discussing a paper presented here at ASH 2016, abinutuzumab-based induction and maintenance prolongs progression-free survival in patients with previously untreated follicular lymphoma, and these are the primary results of the randomized phase three gallium study. To do so, I'm with Dr. Robert Marcus, who is an MD and a consultant hematologist at King's College Hospital in London, and a chief investigator in a large number of practice-changing trials, so thank you very much. Much. Before gallium, the first head-to-head -head comparison of abinutuzumab was, I think, plus chemotherapy, was versus rituximab, and it was the CLL11 study. Do you remember that one? That was in people with previously untreated chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Obviously, it was positive there. Now we're to gallium. Can you tell me a little about gallium? Yeah, it's the same principle that it was chemotherapy plus rituximab um, versus abinutuzumab plus chemotherapy, both arms got maintenance treatment. Uh, it was a single one-to-one -one randomization, and we designed the trial so that we're looking for an improvement in progression-free survival over two years. Currently, we're seeing progression-free survival with rituximab chemotherapy plus maintenance of around six years, and we designed the trial to see whether we could improve that to over eight years. So what did you find? And first, we, describe the, the patients, I suppose, first off. Well, these are the patients with uh, follicular lymphoma that need treatment. So these are patients with advanced stage disease who are symptomatic and who need therapy. Because like with CLL, you can often watch patients for a period of time under observation, so-called watch and wait. They don't need therapy till they're symptomatic. This group of patients needed therapy. Now, this is the kind of patients that you'd normally give chemotherapy plus rituximab to. So we randomized them between rituximab plus chemotherapy versus abinutuzumab plus chemotherapy, followed by maintenance treatment. Now, there's no international consensus as to what should be the first-line chemotherapy in these patients. So we allowed patients to, or clinicians to offer patients either CVP, which is one of the least toxic regimens, or CHOP, which is often used also in diffuse large cell lymphoma, or bendamustine, which has been shown in one big trial to be superior to CHOP in patients with follicular lymphoma. So clinicians had to choose one regimen to partner the uh, antibody with, and then the randomization was either to abinutuzumab or to rituximab. And what did you find? We found that progression-free survival was improved by around 30%, over 30%, wow. uh, and that's a so-called hazard ratio, uh, which exceeded the planned so we had a hazard ratio in the original uh, trial design of 0.74. The progression-free survival exceeded that, so that 80% of patients were free from disease progression at three years. We also found time to next therapy was also significantly prolonged in patients receiving the abinutuzumab-based treatment. So what is it that's happening? What is it that's affecting these people? What are you doing mechanistically that, that brings this kind of an effect? We're giving a different antibody, which is more, probably more powerful, um, it uh, induces ADCC, uh, it causes direct apoptosis in a way that rituximab doesn't, uh, and I think that in a number of studies it's been shown uh, to be effective when patients are refractory to rituximab. So it's got a different mechanism of action, it binds to a different epitope on the surface of the lymphoma cell, CD20, uh, and it's probably a more effective antibody. So when it's partnered with chemotherapy, uh, then we're seeing an improvement in progression-free survival. Now this is the primary results of the randomized phase three gallium study. What's next? Well, we've got also some PCR molecular data, which looks at molecular emissions. Half the patients in the trial had PET scans, so we're waiting for those data to come through as well. Um, and we hope to publish the data in the very near future. The question what's next in terms of clinical trials is I think early identification of poor prognosis patients, so that we can actually pull those patients out and give them more experimental therapy. Uh, the early assessment of remission status. Um, I think PET is very useful at the end of induction therapy, but we haven't got any early markers yet to see whether or not we can actually say this patient's going to fare well or badly. So I think there are now a number of mutation analyses. There's the M7 Flippy, which looks at mutational status plus prognostic indices. In terms of response, a number of groups have been looking at cell-free cell DNA and the rap rapidity of fall of cell-free DNA as a correlative with rem remission. So I think we need to use some dynamic measures of response plus some more sophisticated prognostic measures to try and distinguish between the good, the bad, and the indifferent patients in this context. So we've got good patients who may actually not need a change in therapy, who'll be in remission for eight, nine years, and then they can be treated again at recurrence. 
be patients who have very short-lived remissions, and if we can identify those patients before they progress and offer them novel agent therapy, that will be a significant advance. But I think that this, I think, will build on what we've achieved with this, with this trial. Well, I can tell you in the United States, it's estimated that more than 14,000 new cases of follicular lymphoma will be diagnosed this year. Yeah. We're just finishing out 2016. So there really is a need for better treatment options. Yes, there is. I mean, I think some patients can be observed without therapy. Small numbers of patients have limited stage disease and they can be treated more readily with radiation. And perhaps the addition of rituximab and chemotherapy, there was a recent trial at Astro, which suggests that even limited stage patients may benefit from the addition of, of RCVP to local radiation. Uh, there are a lot of patients who don't need therapy, so they can be observed for a while, even though it's quite difficult to tell patients that they've got cancer and doesn't need treating, but there isn't any evidence as yet of a long-term benefit in treating the asymptomatic patient. And for the symptomatic patient, I think that uh, we've seen a significant improvement in progression-free survival over the last decade. I and mean, we presented here the RCVP data in 2003, and before that, progression-free survivals of the order of three years, and now as a consequence of that, and of maintenance rituximab, and we think also because of abinutuzumab, we're seeing progression-free survivals which may be out at nine years um, as a median first duration of remission. Now, the question what happens after that is that patients may get the same therapy again if they relapse late, because they're likely to be sensitive, and patients relapsing early will need novel experimental therapies. So it's that identification, I think, which will be the most important thing. Well, Dr. Marcus is just one of the people who's got some great papers here, so please check us online where you're looking at us right now, as well as in print at Ash Clinical News. I'm Rick McGuire.